Hello everyone, welcome to another session of our ARD NABARD exam uh, and for today's topic I've chosen on fisheries uh, and we're just going to continue from the uh, part one of our fisheries which we did and my name is Hansen Nora and I've been your mentor for your NABARD exam for your ARD section and please don't forget to subscribe as well as press the bell icon and if you've liked the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well as you can share with your friends okay first and foremost we need to understand uh, what aquaculture is we've already discussed what aquaculture is briefly in our previous um, video so here let me just uh, get into a bit detail about what aquaculture actually means so basically aquaculture it it is the farming of the aquatic organisms such as fishes, crustaceans, mollusks, and aquatic plants. So this aquaculture does not pertain only to the cultivation and harvesting of the fishes, but it has a broad range of um, uh, animal, aquatic animals where it actually applies. So we can even uh, add, you can also add up all those oysters, seaweed, seaweed, uh, prawns and all of these aquatic animals can will come under this aquaculture together so this aquaculture can also be uh, promoted uh, or cultivated um, in a natural or a more controlled environment and these uh, aquaculture these are also known as fish farming right and uh, these aquaculture they involved cultivating fresh water so on the other uh, on the other hand captured fish these are only concerned with the uh, capturing of the fishes and without any without taking care of the whole environment of the uh, of the cultured right but then in aquaculture not only do they care about uh, the not only do they just breed it or rear it just for the sake of, uh, of harvesting it they also take maximum uh, care and utmost care to the water health and the proper functioning of the whole uh, water system uh, whole fish aquatic system right so this aquaculture they involve uh, cultivating the fresh water as well as a salt water population right and these under controlled conditions as well as the uh, environmental conditions which contrast the commercial fishing which is harvesting of the wild fishes right so this is something about aquaculture i hope it's clear and this successful aquaculture to take into consideration of biology of the aquatic species such as feeding as i've told uh, it will involve all these activities like feeding water flow temperature needs and diseases prevention and engineering design like water source and water quality study pond tank containment systems water filtration as well as erosions right so these are some of the factors that uh, uh, aquaculture will it's like a broad term where under it it has so many branches and it involves so many activities that, uh, in contrast with these uh, commercial fishing right so these are all about aquaculture and these aquaculture is very important at, as it helps in sustaining uh, our fish resources continuously because uh, not only will it help in restoring and sustaining the resources for the present as well as it will help for the future so uh, let's go to our importance of these aquaculture right and aquaculture first and foremost it is an important source and excellent quality protein and oil health when I was talking about the importance of fisheries in our previous ex uh, in a previous video see this it's almost the same thing the importance always remains the same as aquaculture it's also related to fishes and all the fish products as well as all the aquatic uh, animals these are also concerned it, ha it gives an excellent source cheapest form of protein animal protein and they have a very um, health if you're going to talk about healthy oil we have this uh, cold liver oil which we get from uh, fishes right so and these they provide a, uh, a really good nutrition they always add a really good nutritional value to our health uh, to our diet especially for children and uh, it's very important in a natural diet right so future for this fish production is dependent on um, 
aquaculture. Since aquaculture is the most sustainable form of um, fisheries, the whole fish production is dependent. As if you're going to talk about this intensive farming, intensive farming, or this just capture fishes, they do not uh, focus on keeping a on keeping a regenerative stock, or they do not. Um, they do not focus on keeping it more sustainable. Whereas, uh, whereas in aquaculture, since it's more sustainable for for us, so it's very important that for the fish production, for the sustainability to keep it running uh, for a lot of uh, years, and for the younger generations, and for the future generation, this fish production is completely dependent on agriculture because not only does it help in giving us production. Uh, and meeting the population's need, it also helps in, it also helps in sustaining it as well, right? So, um, due to the production of fish at low cost, it can be supplied at affordable prices and even the poorest people. So this, uh, even the very poor people, um, since it's very affordable for them and it's the cheapest form of an animal meat consumption, it can. Uh, and they benefit nutritionally and health-wise as well as uh, they'll be able to afford it because and uh, this fishing is one of the uh, primary source of income of these very poor people especially for those living in the coastal regions right so and these cultured fishes they are sealed safe from captured fishes because the cultured fishes are free from pollutants so in captured fishes these are more confined to a controlled environment they do not grow naturally so these um, there might be chances of affecting of it affecting by a lot of pollutants whereas in cultured fishes it can be naturally as well as uh, controlled but to some extent uh, they mostly deal with the whole of uh, they uh, they help or they aid in the nutritional value of the of the ponds of the water of the fishes especially all the diseases of the fishes as well so and that way these are more healthier and these are more uh, free from these pollutants right and this aquaculture they provide a good quality for the uh, growing population before it, uh, we, I think it's self-explanatory and they increase employment opportunities since this aquaculture it is a really big diverse system and a, a diverse department so it's uh, it helps in increasing the income of the people right and since they'll be more production if more production comes then more uh, generating income Will come and in that way it will also give an opportunity for employment for all the people and that way it will increase their standard of living and livelihood as well as it will uh, eventually help in the economy of the country right so these are something about the importance of aquaculture i hope it's clear and let's just move on to the types of aquaculture. So basically, aquaculture can be divided into a marine or brackish water, so this fresh water, cool water, as well as ornamental fishes. Right. So some examples of this marine would be your fishes, which is cobia, sea bass, and groupers. Other items like seaweed would also include in your marine. Whereas in brackish, uh, fishes, sea, ba sea basses, crustaceans like shrimps tiger shrimp, white shrimp and others will come under this crab musels will come under your brackish water and for your fresh water fresh water are mostly the general commercial fishes that we usually see so some of the fishes would be your Indian major carps are rohu, katla, murigal and exotic carps will include your grass carp, silver carp, common carp catfishes are also uh, there such as magur right, and tilapia and some medium and minor carbs like talbasu, sarana, etc. And crustaceans will uh, include your scampi. And some of the cold water fishes would be your trout, masir, etc. And ornamental fishes would be like a lot of white varieties. Right, so these are some of the uh, some of the factors, some of the categories of or categories of aquaculture farms. Right, so uh, now we're going to go on the classification of this aquaculture. So basically, it can be grouped or divided into few, right? And the classification uh, of this aquaculture can be based on, number one is salinity, right? And salinity can be further divided, in, it can be classified into 
brackish water as well as merry culture right so so brackish water it is a mixture of sea water and fresh water and the salinity is less than 30 ppt right so these are uh, uh, a brackish water can also be uh, called as your estuarine water where the fresh water and the uh, sea water mixes or it joins so basically it's like when the river uh, it'll be mostly in the river side or in the river mouth right so it creates a different environment like a perfect environment like a aquatic marine environment and a freshwater marine environment they will be meeting in the same area right and uh, all the uh, all the estuaries, the backwaters, creeks and mangroves waterways, these are brackish in nature. So all these will come under your uh, brackish water, right? So basically over around 25 species of commercial uh, important species like shrimps, carbs, mollusks, all of these, they are uh, come, uh, they will be they come under this brackish water. They can be uh, farmed under this brackish water as well as they have a really high scope in this uh, category right so this is something about the brackish water and moving on to mary culture mary culture as the name suggests mary where it comes from a marine right and so these mary culture these are farming of the aquatic animals and plants in the sea which are mostly uh, confined to the oceans and the sea right so uh, so basically it confines to the marine water farming and these are uh, also known as a maricultural, right? So in mariculture, the rearing of commercially important fishes and selfishes are done in open sea by installing cages. So suppose if you have to, so basically uh, what we do here is that they will be installing cages in the seas and they will be provided a more of a natural environment as they're still going to get all the... Uh, uh, all the natural facilities that the, that the fishes need and all of these need except that the area on where they feed or on where they inhabit it will be more confined to that cage so this uh, this is how the marine culture operates and uh, so that is something about this marine culture right okay so uh, based on the intensity of inputs and stocking density these are the Aquaculture can be divided into three categories, which is extensive fish farming, we have semi intensive fish farming, and we have intensive fish farming. Right? So, so here I've just given roughly on what each of these extensive, semi intensive, and intensive farming. This is a very important topic. So, try to note down the area as well as the density of the um, different farming systems. Right? Right? So, first one is an extensive farming system. So basically, it involves a large pond from about 1 to 5 hectare in area with a stocking density of less than 5,000 fish hectares. So these are basically grown in a large area, but the fishes or the density is very less, right? So these are in this type of system, less human interference is there and they do not, the management is also uh, very less. They do not provide any uh, we, any uh, fertilizers or any supplements or any feed to the fishes. So basically the uh, fishes, they, they feed naturally as well as uh, they feed, uh, they as well as they are rear or breed naturally in the uh, system, in the pond system, right? But then you see the one thing here about this is that uh, it'll be having a low in uh, low input, so which will definitely in return will give you a low yield as well. The yield will be around uh, you know, five hundred to two tons per hectare, right? So these will be your yield. And therefore, this survival weight is also low in this type of extensive farming because since no care or anything is taken, uh, so that's why the survival weight is also low because uh, we're not going to take care of the plant diseases or the nutrition or the feed and definitely it's going to affect the um, growth and development of these fishes, right? And uh, since no supplement is also given and the labor, it is... Uh, no labor and as well as there's no investment uh, on this whole uh, fish farming system so which will make it in return it will give your e low yield 
I hope this is clear. And let's move on to the semi-intensive fish farming. So semi-intensive fish farming is a hybrid of the extensive fish farming as well as an intensive fish farming. So here in semi-intensive fish farming, it is a more prevalent and involved areas rather small ponds from about 0.5 to 1 hectare in area. So this, remember, try to remember the area size as well as the stocking density. This is very important in this classification, right? So uh, the stocking is higher than the extensive farming, which will be about 10,000 to 15,000 fishes per hectare. So here the uh, care is also taken, uh, but the So the care is usually taken to uh, develop uh, a natural food of the fertilization and the feeding, but uh, they do not provide much supplements of the feed, right? So the major source still remains, the major source of food still remains, remains natural food, and but then the survival is moderately higher than that of this extensive fish farming, okay? And the yield is as well moderate, Say about coming from 3 to 10 tons per hectare. Right? So, these are something about this in semi intensive fish farming. And now, moving on to our extensive fish farming. Uh, in extensive fish farming, this system they involve small ponds, tanks, raceways with very high stocking density. It will be about 10 to 50 fishes per meter. Uh, per cubic meter of water. So these are well managed. And here in this intensive farming, attempts are made to uh, achieve the maximum production from this area, from this small area of the fishes, right? And um, they will also try to improve the quality of the water, give them all the nutritional supply and they will, ch they will check the fish's diseases and the, the all run management is taken care of under this intensive fish farming, right? And these, um, these fishes are also given all this complementary feed and supplementary feed as well. So the water quality as well is taken care of and the yield is also high, way higher when you compare it to the extensive and the semi-intensive. So the yield will be around 1,500 to 100 tons per hectare, right? And uh, these, the uh, although the initial cost is high, but as well as the yield is profitably more higher and the income is more higher, so it just cover covers up the initial cost right so leading to a profit so these are something about this is a classification based on uh, based on the stock and intensity stock intensity and the input of uh, farming systems right so i hope this is clear let's move on to our next category so based on the number of stock for farming these aquaculture can be further divided into monoculture polyculture and integrated system so uh, to make sure these monoculture is so in mon monoculture as a name suggests mono which means only one so it involves only one species and if you're going to define it if you're going to define it it's going to be a fish production a fish production system where only one species is cultured and cultivated right and um, the the and some of the examples for this would be katla trout Uh, catfish, your carps will come under cutla, carps and shrimps as well. 
So these are some of the examples of monoculturing and it is uh, it gives a very high value market in the fish culture system and um, and supplementary feeding is uh, necessary and it is complementary. Right, so these are something about the monoculturing. Whereas in polyculture, it is uh, two, uh, it is a uh, poly which means many so two or more species are involved in this fish farming system here in this type system are the two or more fish uh, species will be cultured along with with certain uh, other aquatic animals like uh, crabs or shrimps or oysters as well so it will involve all the aquatic animals and in this culture so remember one point. So remember uh, one point under this. In this uh, polyculture system, farming system, we need to remember that the different habitats, the fishes or the species should diff should belong to different ha different habitats, as well as they should have a different eating habits, eating or feeding habits. Right, so these are some of the important points on polyculture, and these the uh, since it's very important for them to be living or uh, to, for them to live under different habitats, as so they do not compete for any food as well as a space. Right, so uh, for example, this is a this is a sea or a pond. So basically, they can be uh, fishes which feed on the phytoplankton or some of the fishes, they might feed on the aquatic insects. Some of the fishes may be uh, photo, uh, zooplanktons and some of them might be just leaf or the plant feeders, right? So in this way, all these uh, species, these are grouped and cultured in a way so that they do not um, compete with each other for such things, uh, for compete each other in the same environment. So this polyculture has a higher yield than most of the uh, monoculture. If we're going to look into the condition for the freshwater carp farming. And our last system here is an integrated system. As a name integrated suggests, integrated it's a mixture of fish farming along with some other uh, farming system. Such as it can be agriculture, it can be horticulture, mushroom with apiculture. So uh, a lot of, uh, suppose if you're going to set up a pond or uh, near the rivers, or if you're going to culture the whole system, then on a site as well, some other crops can be also grown, which are beneficial for the, uh, which, which has beneficial for both sides, right? So some of the plants can be a ginger, turmeric, or bananas. All of these can be grown around uh, crops or can be grown around these systems. Um, some of the integrated systems would be uh, um, integrated agriculture, integrated fishy agriculture system. It can be integrated horti fishery system. It can be mushroom fishery. It can be apiculture fishery. So these are some of the points uh, that they can be taken care of and then it's just an integration of the food. So it is a very sustainable uh, way of um, integrating all of these components in one area and it's going to definitely increase, uh, give a higher income than the other um, systems, right? So because uh, since we're not just going to get the income from this fish farming, we're also going to get additional income from this horticulture products, from this agriculture products, as well as this mm -hmm. mushrooms, as well as if you rear or an apiculture for bees. So we're going to get an additional income from the honey as well. This creates a dynamic, a good sustainable approach uh, or a model so the, uh, for um, increasing your livelihood as well as increasing the income and sustaining the whole farm systems, right? So these are some, uh, so these are all about the number of species stocks for the farming, right? So we're going to go to our last topic here that is on the biotechnology and its application in aquaculture and 
fisheries. So first and foremost, we need to understand what a biotechnology is. So a biotechnology is an application of a scientific and engineering principles to the processing of materials by biological agents to provide goods and services. It involves the use of microorganisms such as bacteria or yeast or biological substances such as enzymes to perform specific industrial or manufacturing processes where, you, where it uses bacteria that feed on the hydrocarbons to clean up oil spills in one example of biotechnology. Right, so this biotechnology, it provides a very powerful tool for the sustainable uh, development of the agriculture, the fisheries, as well as like the food industry. Okay, So increase in this public uh, demand for the seafood and decreasing natural uh, marine habitats, these definitely have encouraged this biotechnology and the uh, scientific studies to improve uh, its production in the marine food and marine product lines. And this, uh, make, this making the aquaculture as a very uh, as a very growing field opportunities on in terms of animal research, right? So uh, not only will it increase in the production, it will always also they also aim in increasing in the uh, productivity as well as the improve the quality of these fishes and sell fishes and the use of this uh, modern biotechnology uh, will also enhance the production of aquatic species it's not just uh, confined to the aquatic fishes but also to the other aquatic animals and species and they hold a really great potential not only in the demand but also to improve this whole system and the dynamics of agriculture right so a main thing in biotechnology and in uh, aquaculture is the genetic uh, modifications and this whole biotechnology group they create a very tremendous have a very tremendous and a very high improve uh, potential to improve the quality and to meet the demand of the people of this um, population i i hope it's clear about the biotechnology let's go to the next slide which is on the techniques of techniques of biotechnology right so here are some of the first the first is gonadotropin second is gen, uh, transgenesis third uh, third one is chromos chromosome engineering fifth is biotechnology and fish health management sixth is cryopreservation of gametes and gene banking uh, uh, biotechnology in the fish breeding first and foremost we need to know that gonadotropin these are releasing hormones, right? So it is the best available bio biotechnological tool which are available in the market for the induced breeding of fishes. So remember, these are also known as GnRH, right? And these are mostly uh, taken or extracted from uh, Peter de Grand of pig and sheep hypothalamus which they have the ability to uh, induce or release pituitary and these are by stimulating by luteinizing hormone which is also known as LH as well as follicle stimulating hormone so which is known as FSH right so these two they will be releasing such two of hormones right so then so this way these uh, gonadotropin will be used these are extracted from the pig and sheep hypothalamy and they have the ability to release the pituitary gland and through this uh, luteinizing hormone as well as fish uh, simulating hormone so this will also be increasing the breeding in the fishes and so since then this uh, GNRH they have been identified uh, now mostly in the placental mammals even including humans as well uh, the GNR, GNRH analog they have been uh, a lot of depending on the structural variants and the biological activities of the number of chemical analogs that have been prepared and these fish it has a huge impact on the fish breeding and the market commercially under the name of overprim commercially these are known as overprim right so let's go to our transgenesis transgenesis these are our transgenesis or the uh, transgenetics may be defined as the introduction of exogenous or DNA host genome resulting in its stable maintenance, transmission, and expression. 
So here we'll be giving our uh, DNA or genes into a host genome. Basically, these are the technology they offer uh, opportunities for uh, modifying or improving the genetical traits of commercially important fishes such as mo and molluscs, even crustaceans for agriculture, right? And the idea of producing uh, transgenic animals became popular when, uh, when mouse transgenic was introduced, uh, into, uh, introduced by this melatonin human growth fusion gene into a mouse egg. So after that, a lot of uh, cases and a lot of studies have been going on on such um, transgen uh, in where they would in where they would introduce an exogenous gene or a DNA into another uh, another species, and they will check if it's uh, showing a great result or not. So another first uh, transgenic uh, fish was produced by Zhu et al. Right, so this guy, this Chinese scientist, he was the first one to uh, make uh, these transgenic fish. Right, so and um, at this moment, the uh, the most promising tool or for the future transgenic fishes production is uh, is mostly the development is actually the development of this em uh, embryonic stem cells. Um, so these cells, these are under differentiated and they remain totally potent. Uh, so uh, they cannot be the manipulated in vitro and subsequently they get reintroduced into these early embryos and where they contribute to the large germline of the host. So the name is uh, embryonic, stems, embryonic stem cells which is also known as ESC. So these are something on the transgenesis. Let's go to our chromosomal uh, engineering and chromosomal engineering so uh, what we mostly focus here is the chromosomes and the chromosome sex manipulation techniques these are induced uh, or introduced these are done to induce polyploidy so polyploidy if you're going to ask what a polyploidy is polyploidy is a condition where we have more than two or more sets of chromosomal pairs so it can be in a form of a triploid where it'll have three pairs of chromosomes or tetraploid where it'll be having four pairs of chromosomes. Right, so these are some of the things on the chromosomal uh, engineering and these have um, been applied extensively in the uh, fish culture species, right? And so these uh, uh, techniques, these are very important for the improvement in the fish breeding as they provide uh, a rapid approach for gonadal sterilization, sex control improvement of the hybrid, uh, viability, and even clonations, right? So uh, most, of, uh, most of the time, these vertebrates, uh, these are diploid. It means that they possess uh, two complete pair of chromosome sets in their somatic cells. So but nowadays, these uh, polyploidy individuals, these are uh, developed and they possess one or more additional chromosomal sets bringing the total to about three which is in triploids as well as four which is in tetraploids. So these are something about these chromosomal engineering and biotechnology and fish health management and uh, this uh, biotechnology and fish health management the disease uh, problem area these are they are the major constraints in the development of this aquaculture right and so biotechnology they come in play as uh, molecular diagnostic methods as well as use of the vaccines and uh, immunizations of all these uh, fishes and they are gaining a lot of popularity in the disease resistance in the fish and selfish species world well over everywhere for various virus disease and uh, they would be avoiding uh, various important diseases as well. So they also help in the detection methods of all these diseases. So certain, uh, uh, certain methods like gene probes and PCR these, uh, which is gene probes and PCR, which is also known as a polymer polymerase chain reaction. These have been used in diagnostics methods and they have been developed for a number of pathogens uh, affecting the fishes and the shrimps, right? So uh, in case of this finfish aquaculture, 
uh, various vaccines uh, have been developed which contain uh, these vaccines against the bacteria as well as viruses and they consist of uh, killing uh, microorganisms but uh, a new generation of vaccines they can be consisting of a protein vaccine right uh, so the last technique here is on the uh, cryopreservation of gametes and gene banking. So cryopreservation, cryopreservation is um, a method where uh, we, it's a technique or a method which achieve a long-term preservation storage, right? So this cryopreservation not only is used here, it's only used in preserving or in the post-harvest of this horticulture crops as well. We've already discussed in the previous video, right? And so here, uh, they will be storing or preserving of the biological material at a very low temperature of about minus 196 uh, degrees Celsius liquid temperature of a liquid nitrogen. the temperature right and and these it is based on the principle that a very low temperature it will tra tranquilize or immobilize the physiological as well as the biochemical activities of the cell and thereby it will make it possible for them to keep it uh, viable for a very long period of time so the first uh, so the first success in this cryopreservation was found in um, preserving the sperm of the of the fish named as herrings right so this was the first preservation so what we'll do is that uh, these uh, um, that this once we cryopreserve these gametes or the sperms or it will be we can store it for a longer period of time and when we need it in the future for breeding purpose then we'll be able to uh, keep it and for the it's very important in the gene pan, uh, in the gene ba banking where we will be preserving all of it so uh, it will also this cryopreservation preservation will also come uh, overcome problems of male maturing before the female and so uh, suppose even if the male matures before the female in such a way then it, since we have we already have the gene banking and the sperm banks so in that way we'll be able to breed it properly and will also allow a selective breeding as well as it will improve the stock imp uh, stock and enable the conservation of all of these of gene as well so these are something about the techniques of these uh by techniques of biotechnology and in conclusion we can just say that uh, this biotechnical research is growing at a very high uh, at a very high and a very fast pace right so uh the it also has an assumed immense and immense and tremendous uh, importance in the recent past in the field of agriculture, in the field of fisheries, field of human health as well. Right. So the application of a biotechnology in the fishery sector uh, it is a relevant uh, in the recent practice, but then it has been showing a very promising in enhancing the food production as well. So these are some of the techniques of biotechnology. And lastly, here I've just given some of the things that they have under the biotechnology. Uh, the first one here is in that this biotechnology allows the scientists to identify and combine traits in fishes and selfish to improve the productivity and improve quality. So these are some of the uh, importance uh, of biotechnology. They so it would also increase production of natural fish growth factors as well as the natural defense compounds marine organisms used to fight microbial infections. So gonadotropin releasing hormones uh, we have already discussed these are the best available biological tool for the induced breeding of fishes and uh, this one is also known as overprim. So they are the regulator and central initiator of reproductive caskets in all the vertebrates. Right, so uh, we've also discussed the first transgenetic fish was produced by Zhu et al, which was in China. And here, the chromosome sex manipulation techniques to induce the polyploidy and uniparental chromosomes inheritance have been extensively used in the culture of fish species as well. And gene probes and PCR, they are the ba uh, based diagnostic methods that has been developed a number of pathogens in the fish and shrimps. So these are some of the important points on biotechnology. And um, well, that's all for today and uh, for next video we're going to cover some of the uh, types of uh, ponds and post harvest technology as well and we're going to talk about some uh, fishing methods and uh, on feeds uh, feeding and fecundity all of that so supplement feeding as well 
till then please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for further notifications right and don't forget to hit the like button if you have liked the video as well thank you we'll be meeting for the next session